according to what Paul writes, according to Paul and Romans, every Christian is engrafted into the olive tree. They belong to Israel. Now, can you tell me how would it be possible that God is meeting Israel on the Sabbath day, created the Sabbath from the beginning, in the millennium it will be the day that all the nations will come, will, all, all flesh will come to worship before the Lord is on the Sabbath in the new moon, the Rosh Hodesh. Can you imagine what would be Yeshua being with his people on the Sabbath and you with your people on the Sunday, on Sunday church, believing that you are worshiping on the day that you so, you were supposed, like as the Jews have one day, the Sabbath, the the, 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 the Christians have, have the Sunday. Do you really believe that God in, had the intention for the Gentiles to have a different day of the Jews? So he said that Jew and Gentile would worship together. Now the Sabbath is in a place and it will be in place in the end. Are we saying that the Jew is to worship on the Sabbath and Yeshua is a Jew will be with them? You know, and the Gentile will be in another place with who will be with them? Yeshua is here with the Jewish people? Or are the Gentiles to join the Jews and be one with them in the Messiah? Do you see what I mean? So we need really to understand this, that It is the Gentile that joins the Jew. It's not the Jew that joins the Messiah, that joins, joins the, the Gentile and abandons the commandment of God for them. Okay? And I'm talking about believers. I'm not talking about joining the Jews in terms of without the Messiah. Because the Jews with the Messiah, they are, they are um, keeping the Sabbath, the Jews in Messiah. John, Paul, you know, Yeshua, um, uh, Andrew, uh, all, James, all, all of, the, uh, of the disciples, the apostles, all first century community, all of them kept the Sabbath. We're entering Shabbat. Starting with the with the Sabbath, entering the glory of the Lord, the blessing of the Lord. It is absolutely amazing to really be in His presence, to have this amazing privilege of serving the Lord Most High. Serving the Lord Most High. Hallelujah. Okay, so... Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall you labor and do all your work. So we just came, we are coming out of these six days of, six days of labor. And sometimes people tells, tell me, you know, like, oh, come on, it's like, shouldn't we live in the rest? Didn't Yeshua pay the price? Didn't Jesus pay the price for us to live in that Shabbat, Shabbat zone all the time? And, um, what unfortunately um, uh, the church for many years have been interpreting all scriptures in terms of spiritual in, in, sp in the spiritual way you know many verses about that um, many verses are interpreted like that so when they say Shabbat day or Sabbath they, they think on the rest of the Lord they don't think on the Sabbath as the day of rest physically also so the Sabbath is a day where we don't work So we work six days, six days of labor. Exodus 20, verse 8 to 11. Six days we labor and then we rest on the Sabbath day. Where God said, you know, stop creating. You know, I stopped creating, you stop creating too. Do not create anything in your world on the Sabbath. So as we need to imitate God, and all Christians know that we are to imitate God, Ignoring his Shabbat is, is actually, um, how, do you, how can I say, a lack of respect for him, a lack of honor. Because he made that day from creation and he never told anybody to stop it. Okay? It was simply stopped by the Roman Catholic Church, by Constantine. So, 
we 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 need to 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 understand this very clearly to understand to really become the bride that Yeshua called. He called the bride out of Rome. He called the bride out of Babylon, not for the bride to keep digging into the ways of Rome in the worship system. And I keep banging on this because there are most of Christianity, mainstream Christianity, is still believing that the 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 the, the day the day that God uh, that that the church should worship is the Sunday. First of all, the church should worship every single day. I worship every single day, okay? But the Sabbath day has an anointing and a blessing and a sanctification from creation. And God never took it from there. Elohim never said, Yeshua, Jesus never said that the Sabbath is not anymore in place. I paid my price, so you are free from the Sabbath now. That terrible thing as the Sabbath is some kind of a burden. Well, for me, if I would marry and my husband would expect me to work on the day where that we married, that he expect me to um, do everything and work in the house, I would say what a bad husband that would be. For me, having a heavenly father and a bridegroom that says, my darling, Shabbat is for us. I don't want you to cook. I don't want you to do your bed, to make your bed. I don't want you to do anything. You are to prepare. So on the Sabbath, you have food done. You have your things in order so you can rest and be in my presence and rejoice and refresh. So you won't need to go out quickly to get a, a, a bottle of milk or to go and get some petrol. No, everything is in place. You have the milk, you have the petrol in the car, you have everything ready. So you will be uh, enjoying, enjoying, enjoying my presence and, and we will have fellowship. So this is the Lord. Yeah, Yahweh Elohim telling his bride, telling us, you know, that day is for us. It's special. And you can say, oh, come on, the old year, all the days are special to walk with the Lord. Absolutely, all the days we should walk with him every single second in our lives. But what happened is that when we walk, when we walk the other days, we need to do our other things. We need to shop, we go shopping, we need to go to work, we need to get the kids to the school, we need to, you know, it's it's a day where we have responsibilities. We make phone calls, we deal with, with stuff there is there is difficult sometimes we need to so the, the the time to resolve things in our lives is on the six days of labor so for us the lord said okay you have six where you are to produce so we are to be productive people okay six days we you shall labor so we are to labor the six days okay we are not to just put our feet up and just say ah yeah, the Sabbath of the Lord, you have the rest of Yeshua. That's not the rest. The rest is in the spirit, isn't it? Where we go in that rest, in the place of, when you think on the millennium being the seventh day, then you can understand that when Yeshua will reign, that that's the rest that should be in us. Okay? But there is a physical rest. And that physical rest has to do with our ceasing, our creative work ceasing to resolve things to renew refresh restore and fellowship with our beloved heavenly beloved with our family that are in him you know obviously it's like if we have a family that are all following the lord and we are following shabbat together and the entering on shabbat must be the most beautiful thing i don't have that blessing blessed be those that have little children that can help them to learn and those that have their family, they are really joining around the table. They are very, very blessed. Those that have husbands or wives with them, it's absolutely beautiful and amazing. <clears throat> well, I don't. I'm here alone. As you see, this has been my life for nine years now. Uh, or, I don't know, nine or more. It was 2009. So, uh, 2008, 2009. So, yeah, around nine years. And... Um, I've been like that always, so I keep praying, 
<laughs> but it's just to say that if you are in that situation, that is not the end of it. That is not the end of your story. This is just a season that you are going through it, okay? So it, just enjoy, you know, the, the presence of your brothers and sisters. And, and, and now we even have this possibility of doing life. So I'm actually with you guys. I'm entering Shabbat with, with, with you. So it's fantastic, isn't it? So, um, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath unto the Lord your God. Is a Sabbath unto the Lord your God. Is a Sabbath unto the Lord your God. Okay? It's a Sabbath unto the Lord. Not unto us, to the Lord. Yeah? So when we think about that, we, we actually think that this is a holy day. To him, this is a holy day. It's an appointed time. It's like when, if we can, to, I have been having really a sense today of the, the, the terrible uh, rebelliousness that is in the air. The spirit of rebelliousness that is in the air is so, so strong that the, the bride at the moment uh, is being so, 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 um, influenced by the world in terms of rebelliousness in terms of I want to do my way or I would like to do my way you know when you think that the Lord is our authority that he is our head he's out but it's not because he's our head we must do it <laughs> no it's because he loves us he wants to be with us but man, when we understand that we are to honor the Lord and He is the Creator, He is the one that we should yearn to serve, yearn to do it, to keep Shabbat with passion. Yeah? When we understand this thing, then we start to wait a minute. Is His will that His bride stop on the Sabbath? Not the Messianic, not the Torah observant. Every single soul that belongs to Jesus, every single soul that belongs to Yeshua, okay? Every single soul that, cl that, that claims that they are disciples of Jesus, they should be honoring the Sabbath because Yeshua honored the Sabbath, Jesus honored the Sabbath, Jesus kept the Sabbath and never stopped it. So if somebody may, will say that they love Jesus but they don't keep the Sabbath that love is failing miserably because that is the day of the wedding that is the day of the bridegroom he is the Lord of the Sabbath and there was so much unfortunately Constantine brought a new system that is known by the as, as, as the mainstream mainstream Christian church that stopped with the Sabbath they changed Constantine changed the worship day to Sunday and the church assumed it they just say oh Jesus you know resurrect on the Sunday he resurrected on the Sunday but father never changed the day of the Sabbath day never there is nothing in the New Covenant about this nothing in the New Testament about changing the day of worship to Sunday. Nowhere. There is nowhere anything written about Easter. There is nothing written about Christmas. There is, this is a real placement of what God put in place. And I am speaking this today because I know we are in the period of teshuva, repentance. And we need to really repent from having anything in our soul still kind of you know, not knowing, because what happened is obviously the Lord is, is, um, is teaching us, is, is taking his bride out of Rome. And he raises people like me and like many others that are saying, guys, the Sabbath is in place. Just leave Rome. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this bold, really bold. Until you remain with a Sunday system, you will not be able to understand what God commanded about the festivals because you are in a place that is teaching you that Sunday, Christmas and Easter is the way and because you are there you end up doing with them because you belong, you are there, you love them, they are your brothers and sisters, you know, they are our brothers and sisters, they believe Jesus is the Messiah, yeah? So obviously, but unfortunately they are still 
to come out of Rome in that particular area in the in the worship system. So it makes um, a lot of it's a lot of trouble for people that still are in the two systems to really be able to understand this fully. Okay, and I, I have gave uh, actually the the other day uh, um, a paper. Um, I, I put it on the files on the on the on the um, on the group uh, that. Um, it's a, a, a it's a revocation. It's for us to revoke, um, renounce, and revoke uh, the councils of Constantine, and everything that raised against the word of God. So you can come out of the umbrella of Constantine, and when you come out of the umbrella of Constantine, you will that that thing will be broken and you will be able to feel peace when you keep the Sabbath and the festivals. Otherwise, you'll be Am I betraying Jesus? Am I betraying Jesus because all your life that, that you were a Christian, you always went Sunday to church, you know, you always believed that was the truth. And every single Christian believes they are the bride, you know, and they are part of the bride. But they truly believe they have 100% truth because I was one of them and I believed so much that I had the truth and everybody else was wrong until I God really opened my eyes to the to the scripture and I was like my goodness you know and so he trained me the time that he has been trained me is actually for me to now speak the word of God to the church to the brides across the world and bring those that are in the different areas that are still in Rome bring them into the kingdom those that are still in darkness bring them just bring light into their lives and that's what we are trained we are being trained to do because we need to have the bride coming into jerusalem and leaving rome behind okay so i was just saying and i always say when we enter shabbat we are to leave behind our week okay so most of the times we we really um tend to to especially in the beginning we have problems stopping it's like it's almost a hard word to stop i don't know if you if you experience that but i had that experience um i had a, bit, a really difficult time to stop because I, I i like i liked action and suddenly i was like okay so i need to stop so stopping my brain in terms of controlling myself like i'm entering into a realm of peace now so i'm leaving behind um the the struggles i'm leaving behind the things that need to be sorted i need to if i couldn't finish hoovering i leave the the, the hoover in there and i don't finish if i didn't have time to put the, the clothes outside just leave them you wash them again if you need it's really learning to whew, switch before sunset yeah and still have be, have be lighting your candles before sunset starts so you can enter like whoa with sunset okay so i will actually um light these candles because um it's i think is 802 today isn't it i think that's what i saw today the sunset here in in norwich uh it's yes 802 so i'll keep talking about this after okay um so we are to keep the sabbath unto the lord so i'm going to light the light of mashiach thank you father for the messiah our king our master we ask you father that messiah will be presence always like as he said it he will be among us and two or three are together he is among us and I'm lighting uh, candles also for my sons and their wives and children and grandchildren. So I thank you for João, Rebecca, Ava and Mia and their future children and grandchildren. I thank you for Jonathan and Tainara, their future children and grandchildren. And I thank you for Joel and his future wife, their future children and grandchildren. Bless all my posterity, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to light the Shabbat candles now. I 
I thank you so much for Shabbat, for your peace that surpasses all the understanding, Lord. And for the special peace that we have in the Sabbath day, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May the light of Messiah shine in our lives, in our families. In Yeshua's mighty name. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher kereshanu bidvarecha, Venatanan yed Yeshua mishichenu, Vetsevanu lehot, Aul haolam. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments, given us Yeshua our Messiah, and commanded us to be light to the world. Amen. Shabbat Shalom! <laughs> Shabbat Shalom, people! Hallelujah! So we enter Shabbat. And now, I'm going to keep reading what I was reading. So, the word is saying, uh, but the seventh day is a Sabbath unto the Lord your God. In it you shall not do any work, you nor your son, nor your daughter, your manservant, nor your maidservant, nor your cattle, nor the stranger that is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is within, and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. So as I always say, <clears throat> the Lord blessed and sanctified the Sabbath day. He didn't put this anointing, this blessing and sanctification on the other days, you know. I remember when I started to keep the Sabbath that my life aligned completely, you know. I went from a person in great need of emotional peace and emotional um, balance to a person very emotional in peace and in balance just by keeping the sabbath and loving the torah of god that's how amazing the power of the torah that has on our lives because it brings structure and we know most of the people that are suffers nowadays is because they don't have structure in their lives i mean um I'm not saying if a person doesn't have money, I'm not talking about this, but but the fact that sometimes we don't have a center in the inside of us, when we don't have structure, we really get lost. And we know that children, if they don't have a routine, they get lost. They really don't know what to do with themselves. And when God gave us structure, they actually, actually gave us a structure so we know how to live as human beings. And when we uphold this structure and follow his instructions, we enter into the blessing of the Lord. And on the Sabbath day, there is this blessing and sanctification that he put in this day. I just pray that the Lord open our eyes today to see that the Sabbath was a day that he created for himself. You know, and he gave that day to his people so his people could rest and walk a day to look up and not to get distracted with the things of this world the things that take our attention all the time it's a day that if you have a family together with you with the sabbath is the day where the husband the wife the children they are together you know uh, you know as they are preparing to go to the congregation or joining something online or whatever you know they are actually eating together speaking about shabbat about the lord they are studying scriptures together they are praying they are going for a family walk among the nature and remembering uh, that our Creator created all this for, for them. So if there is a day that unite family that is doing Shabbat together, Shabbat is it. Nothing uni unifies more family than the Sabbath itself. So if you can teach your children, do it, do it. Because mine say, oh, you never taught us that, you know, so obviously they don't join me. So. I, I never taught them that because I didn't follow it. I didn't know. 
but once I understood, I saw the power of the Sabbath, entering the Sabbath around the table of family together, you know, lighting the candles and seeing, the, you know, inviting the light of the Lord, you know, just coming into the, into the, the household. It's just amazing, guys, just amazing. So, and again, you can do this like a ritual, which doesn't have any power at all. What makes it so beautiful is when you touch the spiritual reality of what we are doing. It's when you are truly worshiping the Lord Most High when you are doing it. When you light the candles, if you just light the candles to just make a separation, you do it just trivial, light the candles without engaging the heart, engaging your mind, engaging your being with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. You know, really bringing forth light in Him, you know? If you just do it as a ritual, it's just nothing, okay? But if you touch the heart of the Lord, if you allow the Lord to love you and to touch you, oh my goodness, you are up for something really, really amazing on the Sabbath day. Most of the healings of Yeshua was actually on the Sabbath day, you know? <laughs> That's quite powerful. <laughs> <laughs> and the system of the of the time they, they would think that he was breaking the sabbath but in fact everyone knows that spiritual activity it's not breaking the sabbath it's not working and and um doing things the priests can work in the temple they are supposed to work in the temple we are supposed to minister in the shabbat we are supposed to heal the sick on shabbat we are supposed to 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 speak the word to to, to comfort people on Shabbat. We are supposed to do good on Shabbat. So, and, but for the religious system, with, with the, so many rules over the top, then what happened is like, they were accused Yeshua for breaking the Sabbath when he healed on the Sabbath, which that was not breaking the Sabbath. One thing that Yeshua came to do was to teach his people how to keep the Torah in the right way. He showed us how to interpret the Torah with the spirit of the Torah, with the spirit of Messiah, not just with the letter of the law, because the letter of the law kills. Yeah, if you see, this is the commandment you must do. If you don't do stoning, you know the the the, the letter just bring you to a place of of. If you go like that, you become very judgmental, very Pharisaic, very. But if you receive the spirit of the Torah, and, oh my goodness, the spirit of the Torah is love. When you receive the spirit of Messiah that teaches you how to uphold the law, how to live the law, then you have love in action. When you do any of the commandments, like when you make sure that when you light the candles that they are lit in a way that there is safety in the house, that you don't have uh, the danger of having the house on fire, yeah, uh, you are actually upholding the Torah. And it's not because you are being a little bit freak, freaking out because you don't trust. No, it's because you know there is danger. So you make sure that when you 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 take you know you 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 um, how do you say you switch off the the, the flame <laughs> when you the flame you you know you make sure that the thing is well done. You know I was today I was really thinking about this issue of murdering the care the, the care that we need to have with one another respecting that, that, that people can be actually hurt because of our lack of care, you know what I mean? So really, you know, be careful that we are loving people by making sure that they are safe, that people around us are safe. And it's absolutely amazing. This is our principles in Judaism. When I was reading the, the different laws on, the, on how to love your neighbor, I just, oh, I just melt. They are just so beautiful and so precise that it's like you really can learn how to do that because it's precision, you know. Sometimes they go over the board in some things, but there are others that are so absolutely divine. So I keep just those ones and the other ones. I, like I say, I don't throw the baby in the water. I just throw the water, you know. Uh, that uh, where the baby was washed, but I keep the baby because the baby has very good things there. <laughs> so I would like to say this bracha, 
this blessing is, is, is this blessing this uh, prayer is Vishamru. This Vishamru Bene Israel et Hashabat, La Azut et Hashabat, Lidoratam Britolam, Beni Ove in Bene Israel o de Hilio Lam, Kishetia Mima Sanodai et Hashamain vet Haaretz, Uva Yom Hashavi Shavat va inafash. The children of Israel are to observe the Sabbath, celebrating it for the generations to come as an everlasting covenant. It will be a sign between me and the Israelites forever. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he abstained from work and rested. So have you seen that, that, that the Lord is talking about there is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever? It's a sign between me and the, in, in, in Israel forever, the children of Israel. Did you know that if you are a Christian, you are engrafted into the, to the Israel, to the, to the olive tree? Do you know that? That according to what Paul writes, according to Paul and Romans, every Christian is engrafted into the olive tree. They belong to Israel. Now, can you tell me how would it be possible that God is meeting Israel on the Sabbath day, created the Sabbath from the beginning, in the millennium it will be the day that all the nations will come, will, all, all flesh will come to worship before the Lord, is on the Sabbath in the new moon, the Rosh Hodesh. Can you imagine what would be Yeshua being with his people on the Sabbath, and you with your people on the Sunday, on Sunday church, believing that you are worshiping on the day that you so, you were supposed, like as the Jews have one day, the Sabbath, the the the, the, the Christians have have the Sunday. Do you really believe that God in, had the intention for the Gentile to have a different day of the Jews? So He said that Jew and Gentile would worship together. Now the Sabbath is in a place, and it will be in place in the end. Are we saying that the Jew is to worship on the Sabbath and Yeshua is a Jew will be with them? You know? And the Gentile will be in another place with who will be with them? Yeshua is here with the Jewish people? Or are the Gentiles to join the Jews and be one with them in the Messiah? Do you see what I mean? So we need really to understand this, that it is the Gentile that joins the Jew. It's not the Jew that joins the Messiah, that joins, joins the, the Gentile and abandons the commandment of God for them. Okay? And I'm talking about believers. I'm not talking about joining the Jews in terms of without the Messiah. Because the Jews with the Messiah, they are, they are um, keeping the Sabbath, the Jews in Messiah. John, Paul, you know, Yeshua, um, uh, Andrew, uh, all, James, all, all of, the, uh, of the disciples, the apostles, all first century community, all of them kept the Sabbath. All the, all the prophets kept the Sabbath. Daniel kept the Sabbath. Jeremiah kept the Sabbath. You know, King Josiah kept the Sabbath. Hezekiah kept the Sabbath. You know, when David kept the Sabbath, Solomon kept the Sabbath. Do you know, all, all, all those that are part of Israel kept the Sabbath always. John Yohanan kept the Sabbath. You know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, the guys that you read the Bible from the New Covenant, all of them kept the Sabbath. All of them after Yeshua died and resurrected. <laughs> it was changing Rome, guys. And my prayer is that today you will see this because this is basic for our growth in Messiah. Okay? It's a picture of the millennium. A picture of the millennium. He will come. He will come and He will reign over Israel, all over all the earth. From Jerusalem, His bride will be with Him. Can you imagine? In Israel, from Jerusalem, His bride the believers in Yeshua, the believers in Jesus will be with him. How will you be with him on the Sunday? If you will go to be with him, well, all flesh will come to worship him in the Sabbath day. Can you imagine what are you doing today? 
It's time to repent. It's really time to repent, guys. Oh, look, I will read to you Isaiah 66. Isaiah 66. Isaiah 66, and we go for verse 23. This is talking about the millennium reign of Messiah, okay? And it says, verse 23, And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, all flesh shall come to worship before me, says Yahweh, says the Lord. All flesh, not the Jews, all flesh shall come before me to worship me, says Yahweh, says the Lord. On the Sabbath, every Sabbath, it's written, every new moon, the beginning of the month, every single soul will come to worship before him. Man, if this is there and he gave this to his people, what are the Christians thinking about? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not criticizing, okay? I'm, what I'm saying is really, it's almost like a call for repentance came out of Rome. This was made up in Rome, what you are keeping, the worship system you are following. And if I am having leaders, pastors listening to this, please repent because you have the, in, the, in your hands the power of changing the direction of the church that God gave in your hands. You have the power to bring the truth to your people in a gentle way and show them in the scriptures and even if you lose some of them at least you are guiding uh, 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 um, the ship in direction to, to Jerusalem not staying keeping them on Rome don't allow your ship if you understand about the Sabbath don't allow your ship to stay in Rome take them out of Rome start to teach them start to explain these things but before that learn it Make it yours, and when it's yours and you have conviction, then you start to work with them, okay? But this is so important, guys, because if, if those people, the bride will hear, but if you, if you are going to lose some people that will go to other churches, he will keep in Rome, at least you will be responsible for those that came, those that were ready to come, and they will come, will come with you to Jerusalem. I mean, spiritually, I'm talking. I'm not saying that you need to go to, to live there. I'm saying that coming out of Rome, coming out of, of what Constantine did, and really be the true bride of Christ, the bride of Messiah, the bride of Jesus, okay? Those keep the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus. Those are the overcomers. They are not the ones that keep the testimony of Jesus and not the commandments of God. The commandments of God are part of the life of those that will overcome in the end. So please, 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 please open your ears. Those who have ear, have it, you know, open your ear. May the Lord open your ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to you today. And for those that will listen to me in the future, as they hear this, 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 this uh, broadcast, you know, that may, may the Lord really open their eyes. Father, I pray, Father, oh Lord, we repent. Let's repent before the Lord. We are in the period of Teshuvah. Let's repent before the Lord. Father, we repent before you. Lord, 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 Lord. Oh, Lord, I'm so sorry for the ears I was worshipping, Father, in the ways of Rome without knowing, because I thought that, 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 that it, it was truth, that it was right, Lord. And, Father, I know that the pastors, Lord, that are doing it, many of them, they actually know, and they don't, don't know how to come out of that, Lord. But many, Father, don't even know, Lord. And I just pray that your spirit of revelation, wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you, Lord, the, the revelation about the Sabbath, about the festivals, about your Torah will be just moving forth throughout, throughout the nations with such a, a power, Father, that, that your church, Father, those that are truly part of your bride, they will listen your word. They will listen the truth. And the truth will set them free, Father. 
Lord, I ask you that you give them the boldness, Lord, to make the change, the boldness to live behind Rome and to run to Jerusalem. I ask you for good leadership across the world that will love them and help them and not and not put them under a, under a burden, Father. Not bring them things that are absolutely rubbish, Father, that don't will not do anything for their growth in Yeshua. But I pray for good leaders across the world, Lord, that will help your people to come out of Rome, Father, and will be able to be good shepherds, good, 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 and will be able to feed your people in a way that they will be loved, they will be, uh, they will be uh, led to green pastures, they will be led to, to, to the waters, Lord, the, the, the fresh waters of, of, of the river that comes from your throne. Lord, I just ask you for your anointing to break the yoke across the internet right now and across the broadcast that will be heard, Father, Lord, whether in, 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 in uh, audio or, or, or in, in film, Father, in video, I just ask you, Lord, whatever this will end, Father, throughout the earth, I just pray for a massive, Father, a, the power just breaking through and breaking the power of, of Constantine, breaking the umbrella of Constantine, breaking the, the umbrella of Rome that changed the days and changed the seasons, changed the, the laws, Father. It is a spirit of Antichrist that did this Father, I pray for your anointing to set your people free. Let my people go. In Yeshua's mighty name. I pray, Father, for your anointing to break the yoke. And we truly repent. We truly repent for trying to follow you in a way that you never prescribed. Father, we want to follow you in the way that you have prescribed your people. Not the way Rome has prescribed, Lord, but the way it is written, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Open the eyes of your people so your people can see. Open the eyes of the Jewish people across the world so they can see the Messiah. Open the eyes of Ephraim across the world so they can see the Messiah and they can, can embrace the Messiah and can follow the Torah and can follow Yeshua with all the, the passion that was in first century community. Lord, in Yeshua's mighty name, I pray for your glory and your power. In Yeshua's mighty name. In Yeshua's mighty name. In Yeshua's mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.